How do you think human family structures will change in the year 2050? Hum, let me think about that one. I'm not sure, but I'll guess. Okay, let's hear it. It seems to me that people in the year 2050 will be married for love. They'll care for and support each other in a committed and loving relationship. What will happen to families when they get old? Hum, that's a very good question. It seems to me that when people get old, society has the option of letting them live in their own homes or taking care of them in a nursing home. When people choose to live in their own homes, these houses tend to be provided by family members. For example, if John and Mary are elderly and living in their home together, we might provide John with an alarm system so that Mary doesn't have to worry about his safety while she is at work all day long. However, if they are living in a nursing home, the nursing staff will do all the daily chores for them. It is also possible that people will choose to live out their last years with their children in what used to be called a retirement home. This is sort of like an extended family, but with less emotional attachment than what most people feel in a normal family. These kinds of homes are usually owned by the government and run very efficiently. So, we'll let people live at home all their lives? No, not necessarily. There are other options available. I see. What are they? It seems to me that in the year 2050, people will be able to live out their last years at residential homes of their choice. These homes will be owned and run by healthcare providers rather than their families or employers. The residents at these facilities will essentially live the rest of their lives with the same people they have chosen to share them with. This is another very good idea because it means that people won't be alone or isolated when they get old. Of course, this system has some drawbacks as well. Such as? Well, there are a lot of people who have trouble deciding how to live out their last few years. If they have only recently met the person they want to spend their last years with, then it may be difficult for them to trust that person enough to want them to take care of them. Also, if these people are choosing their own families or retirement homes based on friendship or love rather than utility, then they are likely to keep the people they have chosen for themselves even when it is quite obvious that the other person does not really like them very much. I think that the people at these homes would probably need extensive training to learn how to manage their friendships in a more practical manner. Okay, what about when people are already living together? The selection process has much better results because usually the people who come to the decision meet each other much later in life, so they have much more experience interacting with each other. They are also less likely to decide on a spouse based on feelings of mutual friendship than they are on utility. That leaves them with their own self-interest as a guide for selecting their families and retirement homes. They will tend to choose couples who they know will be happy together and will provide each other with emotional support and companionship. They will also choose couples who work well together and who have similar beliefs and objectives. This usually works out very well because if people really enjoy each other's company, they will want to continue living together once they get old. Okay, so how should we design the selection process that we use at the age of 16? The selection process should be straightforward and based on facts and logic. Since these people are going to be raising children at some point in their lives, we need to include a program that teaches them about mating techniques and how to raise these children successfully. They also need to learn practical skills like how to cook, how to drive cars, how to manage jobs, and so on. Each of them needs to learn what kind of job they'll work best at based on their abilities, interests, and preferences. Each of them should also be given a chance to know what sort of person they'd be happy to have as a partner for the rest of their lives. That way they can choose from a wide range of people with whom to raise children. If they decide later, after spending time with a partner, that they don't like them very much, then it's easy for them to cast them off or change partners. I see. So what do we do about the people who feel that the person they're getting married to is not right for them? Well, this is a very good question. The problem doesn't really exist in the year 2050. What do you mean? Well, it seems to me that most people who feel this way decide not to marry. In the year 2050, it's possible to do a lot of things living together with someone even if you're not married to them. You can have a lot of fun for a long time without being married, and that's why people aren't rushing to get married anymore. Many people also move around a lot in the year 2050. 
it will be possible for them to meet new people and form new relationships wherever they go. When they feel like spending time with their partner, they spend time with them. If they don't, then they don't. There are no pressures from family or society to make them stay together if they do not want to be together anymore. The fact that most people care about helping themselves and their children to be happy is another reason why most people are not rushing to get married. When people are old, they will stay with the partner they are with until the partner wants to move out of their home. Then, if they don't want to go, they can do whatever is best for them financially. There are many other choices open for them besides marriage or living together without being married. Thank you.